they did a study that said if you get sentenced before lunch, you get a worse sentence. <laughs> right now, Sam is going to be looking at this and staring at this as well. I can tell you from experience, Rakoff is the judge you want. If you get Judge Rakoff, this guy's going home. If he gets Judge Presco, he gets life. I can tell you if Bankman makes it to the fifth floor, the legendary fifth floor of the NBC, which is where I stayed, he's going to be all right. He's going to be surrounded by thugs. Wannabe rappers, MS-13, Italian Mafia. And somebody said, how do you know, when are we going to know who the judge is? It's supposed to be random, but it's not always random. They swear up and down that it's random. It's very uh, political. I do think there's a chance if he pleads guilty quickly, cooperates as much as he can to recover the, the missing money, he could get something like... 25 to 30 years. Martin Shukreli is a former hedge fund manager who co-founded two hedge funds and served as the CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals. Shukreli initially gained notoriety for raising the price of a vital medication by over 5,000% while the company had a monopoly on it. Shukreli was later convicted of securities fraud and ordered to pay millions in damages to victims as well as sentenced to seven years in prison. In his latest livestream, Shukreli breaks down why he believes Sam Bankman Freed is facing life imprisonment and outlines exactly the court and legal proceedings Sam will be facing, an area he has very specific experience in. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video where Shukreli breaks down exactly how life will be in prison for SBF and also why, at a minimum, Bankman is looking at 30 to 40 years to pay for his crimes. Also, only a small percentage of my viewers are actually subscribed. If you enjoy finance content, consider subscribing or liking the video. It's free and you can always change your mind. Uh, I think Sam will go to jail. Politicians don't save you. They don't... You know how much it takes for a politician to save you? Politicians are, are the most vicious people. They will forget you faster than, I don't know, somebody who forgets something really fast. They're not gonna save some kid they barely know. To be in a politician's good graces, you gotta spend decades. Even if you're family, they might not help you. These are the most vicious people. Why would Democrats give a crap about him? Help some radioactive guy? No way. Corzine is different. Corzine was a politician himself. Corzine was much older. Corzine got lucky. How many people were watching MF Global compared to this? MF Global didn't have lots of people's money. It had a lot of hedge funds money. SBF. Yeah, that's the guy. He's going to jail. He's not going to jail. He's in jail. <laughs> the Bahamas are gonna make him a political pawn, bro. He is at being extradited. Uh, he wants bail. Oh. Uh, yeah, he's got a bail uh, rehearing coming up. How long do you think he'd be facing? Uh, life. Really? Yeah. Why would he be facing life though? It's not like he like killed anybody. Yeah, a lot of white collar people actually get life. Wow. How so. does he compare to Elizabeth Holmes and uh, Sonny? So Elizabeth got, what, 11 years? Well, so if you look at the guidelines for fraud, let me, I guess I can do this. If I'm listening to the expert, yes. <laughs> let me get you the sentencing guidelines. Okay, so if you wanted to play bingo, take a look at my live stream and, and I'll help you out. Because I, I did this calculation myself for, I don't know, days, weeks, months, because it's like, it all hinges on how you interpret adding these numbers up. Um, so anyway, um, the first thing you do is you have seven. So seven points for um, basically any kind of financial financial fraud. So that's kind of the start. The next is the, uh, the loss amount. So he actually gets 30 more points because of that. So you're up to 37. That's already pretty close to life. Sorry, points as in years in jail? No, so this is points. I'll show you how they, that you convert the points in a second. So for me, I had seven. And then they added 16, I think, or 18 or 20. I was trying to argue that I had no loss, so it should just stay at seven, because I didn't have any investors that lost money. But it was, you know, they, they made it an argument that the judge buy, the judge bought that was uh, 16 or 18 additional points. And you'll, you'll see how the points play in in a second. All right, so that's just, we're just in step one. <laughs> He's writing up 37 points in step one. <laughs> step two, apply the greatest of the three. Did, did it involve uh, 10 or more victims? Increase, if so, increased by two levels. So in his case, it's yes, right? Yeah. Did it involve substantial financial hardship to five or more victims? Yes, so we're up to four now. And C, did it result in financial hardship to 25 or more victims? So yeah, that's six extra points. So now we're up to seven and 30 is 37 and six is 43. 
If the offense evolved a theft from the person of another, increased by two. So that's a physical, like, give me that theft. So that does not apply here. That's like the only thing that's gonna not apply here. <laughs> Number four, if the theft involved stolen property, and he was in the business of receiving and selling stolen property, add two, so that doesn't count either. So now we're on, what, 37? Still, no, sorry, 43, right? We're still on 43. It's all irrelevant, but yeah. All right. Gotcha. If the defendant was convicted, <laughs> this is not irrelevant at all. This is the sentencing guidelines. These used to be mandatory. Number five is theft of property from a national cemetery or veterans memorial. Now, I don't <laughs> think he's applicable here, but I think it's possible. You know, they could construe it if a cemetery had a account with FDX. They could add those two points. So I'm just saying. Let's maybe put that as an asterisk. 18 USC 1037, which I don't know what that is. It's fraud in connection to email. So that's a tough one. I doubt it. Uh, we'll skip six. All right, a federal healthcare offense. That's seven. All right, uh, conduct in 8670. I think 670 is some, some weird thing, medical products, so that doesn't count. Number nine, misrepresentation on behalf of a charitable organization. Misrepresentation during the course of a bankruptcy proceeding. They probably nail them on that. Violation of any prior specific order. Misrepresentation to a consumer. I don't think that we'll be adding these two. So we're still at 43, I think. Uh, number 10, if the defendant, oh, this is a good one. This is crazy. Uh, it's only two levels, but it's really funny. And I actually got caught with this on element C, but element A is if, if the defendant relocated or participated in relocating a fraudulent scheme to another jurisdiction to evade law enforcement or regulatory officials while well, he was in the Bahamas from Hong Kong, a substantial part of the scheme was committed from outside the US, or, and this is what got me, is that the offense otherwise involved sophisticated means. Uh, sophisticated means they give to everybody, so that's 45. Uh, number 11, the possession of any device making equipment, auth feature, trafficking unauthorized access, counterfeit fraud device, uh, any use of identification, uh, illegal ID, so no. Number 14, it misappropriation of a trade secret. I would say no, uh, or that the offense, the offense would benefit a foreign government. You could argue that that's the case. Um, okay, this is a good one. 17, apply. The defendant derived more than a million dollars from one or more financial institutions as a result of the offense. No, no, it's so much better than that. B, the substantial- uh, I disagree, I disagree. He had non-bank lenders, venture capitalists, not necessarily bank financial Those are financial Well, we don't know. We don't I'm guessing some bank gave him some money, but B is even better. The offense substantially jeopardized the safety and soundness of a financial institution, substantially in endangered the solvency and financial security of an organization, uh, or was a publicly traded company or more than a thousand employees. He definitely did that. I'm giving B. I'm giving B. For uh, sure. Yes. All right. So now we're up to 47 points. Was he convicted under the offense involved a computer system used to maintain critical infrastructure? Uh... Eh, we'll leave that alone. Uh, 20, a violation of securities laws, and the defendant was an officer of a publicly traded company, registered broker-dealer. I think they were a registered broker-dealer or an investment advisor. I think they may have been that, but let's let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He's at 45 points. No firearms or explosives. Okay, so now we've got the total amount of points, and they, they give you some details here if you're confused, but we're going to go with relatively... Speaking, 45 points. So we're going to go with criminal, sentencing, guidelines, points chart. So this is the sentencing table, and this is what I looked at and stared at like my entire time I was in prison. And right now Sam is going to be looking at this and staring at this as well, because this table sucks. So you start in zone A. This is the, literally the number of points we're talking about, right? And this is the number of months. So Sam's criminal history is one. He's in column one. So he is not getting anything less than what? We say 40-ish points. So he's not eligible for zero to six months. He's not eligible for around a year in prison. He's not eligible for two years in prison or three uh, or five. He has 40, at least 45 points, right? Well, 30 points gets you around 10 years. 35 points gets you around 15 years. 40 points is mm, roughly 30 years. 43 points is life. So that's kind of where he's at. Um, 
So he's in between a rock and a hard place, son. Yeah, I would say that. Now, one of the good things that you can do... So, these guidelines used to be mandatory. Now, they're, they're somewhat... They're so-called advisory. Booker v. U.S. v. Booker, I want to say, made uh, them uh, advisory. So, yeah, so he did 43 or more points. I think there's no doubt about that. The judges understand that some of these points kind of double count. Like, all fraud is arguably sophisticated means, right? Like, there's no fraud that doesn't involve sophisticated means, right? Um, that's kind of the whole point of fraud, is it's sort of sophisticated. I mean, you could have an unsophisticated fraud, I suppose, right? But in general, that's sort of the way it works. There are some judges, so my judge was considered a very good judge. My lawyer said it, my, um, uh, my opponents said it, my prosecutors. They said Martin got a good draw. So if you draw the right prosecutor, you can win big. I'm sorry, the right judge, you can win big. The prosecutor kind of doesn't matter. They're mostly unskilled, kind of regardless. Occasionally you'll have a star prosecutor, but most of these people are never going to be real trial attorneys that are any good. And I'm not saying that to disparage any specific person or anything like that. I'm just saying it's rare to be a great trial attorney. So it's just sort of part of the part of the game. Uh, it's usually some 30 year old person, a couple of years out of law school, they don't know what the hell's going on. And it's so easy to win these cases that it's, you know, it doesn't take much. Now this is a big case. So if it goes to trial, you better believe they're gonna put in their best, their best person. So some judge, each judge is different. And that's the funny thing about this is that that's the biggest crapshoot by far. So I could see um, the judge giving as much as a 50 point discount, I'm sorry, 50% discount. That's kind of the biggest they give. They will get, I mean, they, you know, just to be clear, the judge can do literally whatever they want. They could sentence him to one day in prison. Uh, they could sentence him to life, either way. And there's no real um, way to challenge that. Once that's set, it, the, the appeals court will almost never um, reverse a sentencing decision. It is almost impossible to reverse a sentencing decision. It has to be such a wild, inappropriate sentence <laughs> And given the, in this circumstance, kind of anything goes, I don't think there's any chance you get a do-over. You get one shot at sentencing here with one judge. And every time you do something stupid, uh, in my case, I did a lot of things stupid, you hurt your, you know, you kind of hurt your yourself in the eyes of that judge. And you have to be really, really smart about what you say, how you say it, what you do. And you certainly, the, the bad things in your past, everything will come up. So... You certainly uh, don't want that. Now, no judge goes above guidelines. Now, the problem with Sam here is that you can't go above the guidelines. Above guidelines for him is a double life sentence or something like that, right? So, you know, he has to get a discount. The only question is, what's the discount? Like I said, I've seen as much as 50%, but in the case of fraud, more and more, I've seen very little discounting. Um, sometimes 10, 20, 30% discount. It also depends on what the judge feels um, the guidelines should be. Um, sometimes the judge will kind of do an adjusted, mixed kind of guideline sentence. So I'm guessing he's going to get something in this higher end, but but is spared life. Um, although if he gets the wrong judge, so let's look at the bench. It's uh, it's complicated. I'll go through each judge real quick. Each judge has a, and I should be probably pretty careful about what I say about these people. <laughs> Each judge has their own <laughs> reputation. You can actually look that look that up. All right, so here are the current judges in the Southern District. Rakoff is the judge you want. So if you get Judge Rakoff, this guy's going home. He's not going home that quickly, but he could conceivably get five to 10 years if he draws Rakoff. So this is for all the marbles. If he gets Rakoff, Rakoff's known to be the nicest guy in that building. Um, you cannot go wrong with Rakoff. He sentenced a lot of people. For example, he sentenced Charlie Shrem, who was the first Bitcoin felon, to just a year and a day or 18 months. Judge Rakoff is the nicest guy in this building. If he gets Judge Preska, he gets life. A fair judge, don't get me wrong. Uh, judge Rakoff will listen to, uh, listen to it a bit. Caproni's also on the, on the harsher side. Buckwald's on the harsher side. I've dealt with a lot of these people in civil cases, including uh, 
um, Judge Ramos. Judge Ramos is, is fairly good. So each judge has their own perspective. A younger judge is going to be very afraid of bucking the trend, right? A younger judge will go very close to guidelines. An older judge, like a Rakoff or others, an older judge would be willing, based on their experience, to depart from the guidelines. Usually, you don't depart upwards, right? So they'll usually depart downwards. And so I think there are judges that would depart downwards in this case. Southern is not the greatest district for sweethearts. There aren't a lot of sweethearts in Southern District. It is the most prestigious district in the entire U.S. court system. It is Manhattan, you know, uh, New York City, the center of the world to some people. They uh, had a judge named Judge Forrest, who is the widow maker, the only judge in the whole bench. Uh, in fact, the only judge I know in the entire system that would give above guideline sentences. Um, a lot of these judges are new. They're, some of these are new appointees. I don't know every one of them. Uh, judge Nathan is not so bad, actually. Uh, I've dealt with Judge Nathan. Nathan, she was very fair, very thoughtful. Don't know how she sentences. There are some judges that work in some ways civilly and then they change their disposition in criminal cases. So anyway, it'll be quite interesting to see who he gets. Now, when, when, you, are, when you have a multiple person indictment, which this will become, there will be more people indicted here, possibly as many as 10 or 15 or more, those people will get the same judge. Why? Because the judge gets a, the, the whole total understanding of the case. And the judge says, hmm, after looking at all this, I think Trabuco did this, Ellison did that, and Bankman did that. And the real mastermind is, well, it's probably Bankman, right? But in the case that we got this all wrong and the real mastermind was somebody else, that will come to light in the trial. So the judge gets to say, well, I'll give you 10 years, I'll give you 10 years, I'll give you 30 years, I'll give you, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So the judge has technically been decided, but this is a great question. Somebody said, how do you know, when are we gonna know who the judge is? Very tricky question. And how do they decide? Well, it's supposed to be random. It's supposed to be random, but it's not always random. It, it really, they, they swear up and down that it's random. But in the Eastern District, like I said, I was the biggest case in many years. I got the best judge or the second best judge, they said. But in the Southern District, for my Federal Trade Commission case, I got the worst judge. And I can't think that was random. As I talked to my attorneys, they agree it was the most outlandish decision that that judge gave and that we we're going to win on this appeal. And, and there's no, to Boomer's point here, there is no verifiable randomness. It is trust us. It's random. And we know that New York has very screwy politics. It's very personal. It's very uh, political. And it's hard to believe that randomness is 100% uh, the case, right? That's a good question. Pennywise asks, where is SBF going to prison? Well, right now he's in the Bahamas. I can tell you from experience that as soon as he's extradited, he'll, be, he'll land in either MCC or MDC. Neither are places Sam Bankman wants to be. Having said that, it will be fairly lit for him. Why do I say that? <laughs> well, he's a celebrity. He's gonna be in the Manhattan Detention Center or the, I'm sorry, Metropolitan Detention Center, their Manhattan Correctional Center. The shoe is not bad in MDC. The shoe is bad in MCC. Uh, Epstein was in the shoe in MCC. But the shoe is bad no matter where you're at because you're just not around people. But I can tell you if Bankman makes it to the fifth floor, the legendary fifth floor of the MDC, which is where I stayed, he's gonna be all right. He's gonna be surrounded by thugs, wannabe rappers, uh, Mexican Mafia, MS-13, uh, Italian Mafia, Perfect. Bloods and Friendly Crips, bunch. other white-collar criminals, and it's going to be lit because they're all going to want to meet him and shake his hand. Um, they're not going to bother him. They're not going to beat him up. They're probably going to celebrate him. They're going to say, oh, you're that guy from the TV? Man, you stole them billions, though. And, and he's going to be like, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, that was me. Yes. Uh, now, he, got to, he has to be very careful what he says because there are actually jailhouse snitches. He's got to learn very quickly how to act around prison, right? He has to watch his mouth pretty carefully because if he says something stupid, someone will smack him or, or hit him or whatever. But nobody's going to stab him or, you know, kill him for no reason. Even if, his, if they had money with FTX, I don't see them going after him. In general, he'll be all right. 
Um, the problem is not MDC or MCC. The problem is when he goes to real prison. MDC or MCC are holding places. He could be held there. He will be held there while he either pleads guilty, which is what I think he should do, or he uh, goes to trial, which would be a, a huge mistake, uh, or in the miracle situ situation where he gets bail, uh, he will be held in MDC and he'll go to court every day at, at 5 a.m. Uh, for, for trial, which would be very painful and difficult. It's hard to go to trial every day for me living in my so-called penthouse apartment. You know, it's very hard to do it from prison, which is why they should really not let people go to trial while they're while they're in prison. I think that's that's terrible. Uh, bail should be given to everybody. Um, you know, how is he going to meet with his attorneys and prepare for trial while he's in, you know, in a jail cell? It's very difficult. It's really a shame. And it stacks the, more or less stacks the deck, right? Even more against the defendant. And I think that everybody should have the right to a fair trial, even if they're kind of obviously guilty, right? We still have to hear in a court what happened, not in the media, not in rumors, but in actual court. You know, there, there's a process for a reason. He might plead guilty and just say, forget it. Like, give me some lenience for admitting my guilt. And you, you get, by the way, on that sentencing chart that I gave you all um, a second ago, you get three points off if you admit guilt. So he would go from 45, which is life, to 42, which is 360 to life. And if he got the lower end of his guidelines, he would get, say, 330 if his judge was feeling good. So 330 divided by 12, anybody better at math than me? 27 and a half years. Now in 27 and a half years, you do 85% of your time. So he would do 23 years. You would get a year off for a uh, halfway house. So that's 22. You get uh, another year possibly for first step back. So he would do 21 actual years in prison. So he'd be out in 2043 and he'd be like 55 or something. And we would all kind of, you know, remember him, of course, but people our age now would be like, oh, who is that? Oh, I guess he was some important guy in the uh, 2020s. Or they call him the 20s, right? They do think there's a chance if he pleads guilty quickly, cooperates as much as he can to recover the, the missing money, uh, he could get something like 25 to 30 years. Yes. Um, that's That's kind of what you know, what I'd be hoping for if I were him. Uh, who's going to be on his jury, though? Uh, they'll find somebody. It's always, you know, it's not not hard to find. So what are the bet odds here? Plus, minus 20 years? Uh, no, I think he's got more than that. 20 would be pretty pretty sweet, I would say. I would say it's over under like... No, that's just like the, for the charges now. There, there could be like a superseding charge, too. Oh, that's... Yeah, they're going to supersede him for sure. I heard about uh, his testimony. Yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll supersede him. Yeah. I, I'd be shocked if they didn't supersede him, but you know, the superseding indictments aren't always a good thing for the government. Um, you know, in this case, it'll probably be, it'll probably help them uh, quite a bit. That was funny about Carolyn Ellison in that coffee shop near the Southern District of yeah. New York's attorney's office though. Yeah, that was very weird. With an, another FTX employee. Was she, oh really, she was? <laughs> was? Was that true? Yeah, she was oh, with another no. FTX employee. 